Sherlock Holmes. We present Barry Foster as Sherlock Holmes and David Buck as Dr. Watson in a new dramatization of the short stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. The Naval Treaty, dramatized by Bill Morrison, with Richard Kay as Percy Phelps and Richard Herndl as Lord Holdhurst. Lost your appetite, Watson? Mm, called Phelps. Tadpole Phelps, we used to call him. Forgotten why. Ah. Nice chap. Mm, seems to be in a very difficult situation. Of what kind? He doesn't say, but he knows my friendship with you and asks me to bring you down to see him in uh, Woking. It seems he's been very ill. In fact, he says, I've been off my head since the blow fell. Now I am clear again, so try to bring him. Sounds serious. What do you know of him since he left school? Well, he was a brilliant sort of chap anyway, and with his uncle's influence, I believe he has a position of great trust in the Foreign Office. Uncle? Lord Holdhurst. Oh, the new Foreign Minister. Mm. What do you think, Holmes? Chap does seem in a bad way from his letter. Hmm. If we're quick, we can be in working by 11 o'clock. The train only takes an hour. I am so glad to meet you. How are you, Watson? <laughs> I should never have known you under that moustache. <laughs> it was good of you to bring your friend. Uh, this is my fiancé, Miss Annie Harrison. Good morning, Miss Harrison. Oh, gentlemen. Miss, Miss Harrison. I doubt if I would have survived the past ten weeks if it wasn't for her devoted care. Yes, I can see you're still a long way from being recovered, old chap. Yes, I've been in this downstairs room since I fell ill. Too weak to even climb the stairs. Ah, good morning. So this is Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. I'm delighted to meet you. And you, I take it, would be Miss Harrison's brother. Well, how did you know that? Ah, the monogram, J.H. Yes, Harrison. Yes, I'm Joseph. I've been staying here for a while, giving a hand. I didn't intend to stay so long. This was Joseph's room. I'm sorry, old man, that you had to be bundled out in such a hurry. But when I came home that dreadful night... Percy, you must save your strength to tell your story to Mr. Holmes. It was obvious to Dr. Perry, our local doctor, that Percy was in for a long illness. So this room was both convenient and with the French windows full of light and air. He has to be attended night and day and never left alone. It's been a dark time, Mr. Holmes. Please help us. Willingly. Tell me the story. Shall I leave, Percy? Uh, I'll be on my way. A pleasure to have met you, gentlemen. Uh, Annie. Uh, please stay, my dear. Oh, very well. Then I'll be off. I have some business. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mr. Holmes, I was, as Watson may have told you, in the Foreign Office. Yes, indeed. When my uncle became Foreign Minister, he gave me several missions of trust, which I discharged, and he came to have confidence in my ability and tact. Nearly ten weeks ago, on the 23rd of May, he called me into his private room... Ah, Percy. Good afternoon, Minister. Uh, make sure you close the door. Yes, sir. How's your mother? Very well. Oh, give her my compliments when you see her. These days, I'm afraid I have little time for the family. Of course. Now, I have a very delicate task, which must be completed quickly by someone I can trust absolutely. You can rely on me, Minister. This is a matter between ourselves. No one else must know. This small roll of papers is the original of a secret treaty between England and Italy, which has just been concluded. I regret to say that some rumours have already got into the public press. It is of enormous importance that nothing further should leak out. The French or Russian embassies would pay an immense sum to learn the contents of these papers. I need them copied. Can you do it? Yes, of course. I take it you can lock the desk in your office? Yes, sir. 
I will give directions for you to stay behind when the others go this evening. Copy this, lock it and the copy in your desk, and hand them back to me personally in the morning. I warn you, it will take time. It's in French. Twenty-six articles. Thank you, Percy. It did take a long time. I was anxious to get away, for I knew that Joseph, Mr. Harrison, was in town and that he would travel down to Woking by the 11 o'clock train, and I wanted, if possible, to catch it. Of course. But by 9 o'clock, I had only done nine articles. I was feeling drowsy by then and thought a cup of coffee would clear my brain. Yes. A commissionaire remains all night in the little lodge at the foot of the stairs, and he makes coffee on a little spirit lamp for anyone working late. So I rang for him. Come in. Who are you? You rang the bell, sir? Yes, for the commissioner. Well, I've come instead. Why? He sent me. I've never seen you before. I only come at night. I do the cleaning. I see. I'm his wife. Mr. Tangy's wife, the commissioner. I'm sorry. It was just that I didn't know anyone else was in the building. Well, there's only me and him. What did you want, sir? Well, some coffee, if you could manage it. I'll do that right away, sir. Thank you. The coffee did not come. I wondered what the delay might be, so I went to find out. Describe your part of the building. Uh, there is a, a straight passage which leads from my room. Is it the only way in and out of the room? Yes. Uh, the passage ends in a curving staircase with the commissioner's lodge in the passage at the bottom. Any other exit? Uh, halfway down the staircase is a small landing, and a corridor runs off that, which then leads by a small stair to a side door. Mm. Who would use it? It's used by servants, and sometimes by clerks when coming from Charles Street. So you left your room empty and came down the main stairs? Yes. Mr. Tangy. <coughs> oh, oh. Oh, excuse me, sir. Oh, sorry, I must have fallen asleep. Oh, I wonder what had happened to my coffee. Oh. Well, the kettle's boiling for it. That should be just and boiled dry. Ah, oh, good. There's still water in it. Oh, I won't be a moment, sir. Oh, that's very strange, sir. I thought there was no one else in the building. Oh, sir, but look which bell it is. Well, which bell, man? I mean, you're here, sir, down here. Well, which bell is it? Well, it's a bell of your room, sir. If you're down here, who rang it? Good God. Quick, follow me. Well, there's no one here. I don't understand it. Well, what is it, sir? What's, what's the matter, sir? It's gone. What, sir? Oh, uh, private documents. How can it be gone? Well, if someone was here, they must have used the side door and the passage. Otherwise, you'd have seen them. I mean, a rat couldn't hide in these corridors. We must go down there, quickly. There's no one about. We're too late. Oh, look, sir, look. There's a policeman on the corner. Officer! Officer, can you help us? Well, what can I do for you, sir? A, a robbery has been committed. A document of great value has been stolen from the foreign office. Has anyone passed you? Oh, I've been standing here a quarter of an hour, sir. Was the robbery before a quarter to ten, sir? No. Has anyone passed? Only a woman. Tall, elderly, with a paisley shawl. Well, that'll be my wife. She's finished cleaning here. Well, she was in a hurry. No one else came this way. The thief must have gone up the street then. Now, come on, so we've no time to lose. Wait, no, wait. Which way did the woman go after she passed you? Well, I had no reason to notice. Well, was it in the last five minutes? Yes, sir. Yeah. Look, my old woman had nothing to do with it. Now, let's ask the other end of the street. No one had seen anything. Everyone was hurrying to get out of the rain. Rain? Did you then examine the corridor for footmarks? Yes, there were none. Hmm. This chain of events is of extraordinary interest. What did you do next? I examined the room and found nothing. Whoever came in had to use the door, but why did they ring the bell? So what did you do? We contacted Scotland Yard and the detective, Mr. Forbes, came round at once. We went to Tangy's house to interview his wife. At first, she tried to hide from us, but it seems she was afraid of some debt collectors and thought at first we were them. 
We searched the house. She, she was taken to Scotland Yard and searched, but we did not find the papers. It was only then that the ruinous horror of my situation came in its full force to me. I recollect a little after that. All right, old chap. Just rest a little while. You're not strong yet. He came home in an extraordinary state. Fortunately, Dr. Ferrier was also on the late train and took charge of him. We put him straight into this room and Joseph moved out. For over nine weeks, poor Percy's been unconscious or raving with fever. It's only in the last few days that his memory has returned. The police have been able to discover nothing. You are my last hope, Mr. Holmes. Otherwise, my honour and my position are gone. Mm. I have only one question. Did you tell anyone about your task, even Miss Harrison here? No one else knew. I didn't leave the building that day. And no one, by chance, came to see you? No one. Do you see any prospect of solving this mystery, Mr. Holmes? The affair is a very tangled one. Do not allow yourself too much hope, Mr. Phelps. I will go to London and return tomorrow, though it is likely my report will be a negative one. It gives me fresh life to know something is being done. Come, Watson. We have a good day's work before us in time. Have faith, Percy. Uh, I've been puzzling away, but I must confess I'm baffled at the moment. Most depressing. It's very cherry to come into London on one of these lines that run high above the houses. Look at those big, isolated clumps of buildings rising up above the sleds. Uh, oh, you mean the board schools? Lighthouses. Beacons of the future. Capsules with hundreds of bright little seeds in each, out of which will spring the wiser, better England of the future. What did you think of Miss Harrison? Hmm? Oh, uh, a girl of strong character. I must make some inquiries about her family. But today must be a day of inquiries. Oh, uh, my practice. Oh, if you find your own cases more interesting than mine. No, I was going to say that it could get along very well for a day or two without me. After all, he was a friend. Excellent. Well, where do we start? With motive. With who profits. Here there's profit for the French or the Russians or whoever might sell it to them. And then there's Lord Holdhurst. Holdhurst? He's the foreign minister. It's conceivable that a statesman might find himself in a position where he was not sorry to have such a document accidentally destroyed. We must not be prejudiced about anyone. What bothers me is the bell. Yes, that is the most distinctive feature of the case. Ah, London. I think we shall begin by seeing the detective fall. heard about your methods before now, Mr. Holmes. You're ready enough to use all the information that the police can lay at your disposal, then you try to finish the case yourself and bring discredit on us. On the contrary. Out of my last 53 cases, my name has appeared only in four. The police have the credit for the rest. I don't blame you for not knowing this, but if you wish to get on, you will find it better to work with me and not against me. Well, to uh, tell the truth, I wouldn't mind a hint or two. I've certainly had no credit for the case so far. What steps have you taken? Well, Tangy, the commissionaire, has been shadowed. He used to be in the Coldstream Guards. Uh, seems to have a good character. His wife's a bad lot, though. Ah, oh, yes, the wife. Uh, have you shadowed her? Oh, yes, our woman even managed to get into conversation over a few drinks, but uh, uh, she could get nothing out of her. They had uh, debts, I believe. Yes, uh, heavy ones, uh, but they've been paid. Well, isn't that significant? No, his army pension was due. There's no sign of other funds. Oh. What explanation did she give for answering the bell herself when Mr. Phelps rang for coffee? Her husband was tired. She wanted to relieve him. He was fast asleep when Phelps came down. Why did she hurry away? Uh, she was later than usual and wanted to get home. Did she see anyone? Only the constable. Oh, that seems to exhaust that line of inquiry. Have you formed any theory about how the bell rang when they were downstairs? <sighs> I don't have any theories left, sir, of any kind. I'm baffled. Mm. My thanks for what you've told me. If I can put the man into your hands, you shall hear from me. We must go to the Foreign Office. Uh, Dr. Watson, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Your name is very familiar to me. I can't pretend I'm ignorant of the object of your visit. In whose interest are you acting, may I ask? 
In that of Mr. Percy Phelps. Ah, uh, my unfortunate nephew. It's a bad business. I fear the incident may have a very prejudicial effect on his career, if it gets out. It hasn't yet. What if the document is found first? That would be different. Well, ask your questions. I shall be happy to give you any information in my power. When you gave instructions to Phelps, could you have been overheard? That is out of the question. Did anyone else know the treaty was to be copied? No one. Then, since neither you nor Phelps said anything of the matter to anyone, it must follow that the thief's presence was purely accidental. He saw his chance and took it. That is outside my province. I take it that very grave results might follow from the details of the treaty becoming known. Very grave. Nearly ten weeks have elapsed since the theft. Have these grave results occurred? No. If the treaty had reached, say, the French or Russian foreign offices, would you expect to hear of it? I should indeed. So we may suppose the treaty has not reached them. We can hardly suppose the thief took it home in order to frame it. Perhaps he is waiting for a better price. Then he had better hurry. It will cease to be a secret soon. Why the delay? Of course, if the thief has had a sudden illness... An attack of fever? I didn't say that. Lord Heldhurst, I have already taken up too much of your valuable time. I shall wish you good day. Every success in your investigation, be the criminal who it may. Good day, gentlemen. Well, what do you think of him, Watson? A statesman? Uh, did you notice his boots had been resold? I fancy he has a struggle to keep up his position. He's not rich. Well, I will do a little more today, Watson, but I'll be obliged if you come down to working with me tomorrow. Very well. Uh, uh, Holmes. Yeah? Percy was always an honest chap of boy. Yes, I'm sure he was. Mr. Holmes, my life is now in danger. What? How? It seems incredible, but... From last night's experience, I can come to no other conclusion. What happened? Last night was the first night I slept without a nurse in the room and I refused a sleeping draught. I had a nightlight burning. About two o'clock, I was roused by a slight noise. It came from the window. Someone was forcing the catch on the French windows. I waited, and then when the window was pushed slowly open, I sprang out of bed and flung open the shutters. Who was there? A man, but I hardly saw him. He, he was gone in a flash. He was wrapped in some sort of cloak which hid his face. But one thing I am sure of, he had a weapon in his hand. It was a long knife. What did you do then? Oh, I hadn't the strength to pursue him. I rang the bell, but the bells ring in the kitchen and everyone was asleep upstairs. I shouted. Eventually, Joseph came down and roused the others. He tried to follow a trail, but the grass was dry. They did find a break in the wooden fence by the road, though. Did they tell the police? Well, I thought it best to wait for you. How extraordinarily interesting. Isn't it, Watson? It baffles me. Have you stayed in the room since? Yes. Ah, Miss Harrison, Mr. Harrison. Has, has he told you what has happened? Yes. It was dreadful. Mr. Harrison, you tried to track the intruder. Can you show me? Yes, at once. We didn't find much, though. Will you come too, Mr. Phelps? Fresh air might do me good. Lean on me, Percy. Uh, Watson can help him. Yes. I would prefer you to stay behind in this room. If you insist. I do. Let us go out by the window. Yes, you see here. Some wood has splintered off. The fellow must have scaled the fence here. Do you think it was done last night? It looks rather old. Well, I'm no expert. No marks of anyone jumping down. In summer, the ground's hard. Well, let's move on. You all right, Phelps? Oh, Quite strong, thank you. Oh, we'll soon have you fit, old man. <laughs> now, why that window? Dining room would be easier. Well, those windows are more visible from the road. True. Side door? It's securely locked at night. I'm sure it was just a burglary. Nothing to do with Percy. Mm -hmm. You're probably right. However, it would be the greatest possible help if, Phelps, you could come to London with us today and spend the night. Do you feel up to it? Oh, I think so, yes. Joseph can come as well and look after me. Oh, you should have more confidence in Watson. He is a medical man as well as a friend. <laughs> I'll let you arrange the details. I must speak to your fiancée. 
You don't need me, Percy. I'll stay down here and make sure everything's all right. Mr. Holmes, why must I stay in here? I want you to stay in here even longer. Do not let anything, anything at all, persuade you to leave this room until nightfall. It is of vital importance. If you wish it. Tonight, leave it, lock it from the outside and keep the key. Now, you promised to do this. But, but he Percy. will come to London. It's for his sake. I will do anything for him. There you are, old chap. I won't find the journey too long. I feel very well. Uh, shall we board the train now, Holmes? Yes, do. <coughs> I shall see you tomorrow. Well, uh, aren't you coming with us? Look after him, Watson. Stay with him all the time. But, but, but Holmes! Ah, oh, morning, Percy. Ah, oh, you're looking a little better already. <laughs> uh, tea or coffee? Um, coffee. Is Holmes not back? Oh, he will be. Yeah, do sit down and have some breakfast, old chap. Oh, I could eat nothing. Oh, you must. You're not a well man yet. <laughs> yes. Did you sleep? <laughs> Hardly a wink. Oh, you must trust Holmes. Do eat something. Holmes! Good morning, gentlemen. Where did you spring from? I've been here a little time, having a word with Mrs. Hudson. Ah, breakfast! But you cut your hair. Oh, it's only a scratch through my own clumsiness. Now, what has she prepared for us? Mm, I'm starving. Have you any news? Yes, this case of yours, Mr. Phelps, is certainly one of the darkest I have ever investigated. I fear that it would be beyond you. It has been a most remarkable experience. That's bandage tells of adventures. <laughs> what happened? After breakfast, my dear Watson, remember, I've travelled from Surrey this morning. Ah, curry chicken. <laughs> Mrs. Hudson's cuisine may be a little limited, but she has as good an idea of breakfast as a Scotswoman. Hmm. What have you there, Watson? Ah, ham and eggs. Good. <laughs> and what have you before you, Mr. Phelps? Or will you help yourself to what is already here? Ah, uh, thank you. I can eat nothing. Oh, come, come. Try the dish before you. Oh, thank you. I would really rather not. Well, then, I suppose you have no objection to serving me from it. Oh, of course not. <laughs> The treaty. Oh, it's the treaty. There, 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 old chap. Calm yourself. Do try to be calm. It was too bad of me to spring it on you like this, but Watson will tell you that I can never resist a touch of the dramatic. Oh, may God bless you. You have saved my honour. My own was at stake, you know. I assure you, it's just as hateful for me to fail in a case as it is for you to blunder over a commission. I have not the heart to presume to interrupt your breakfast any further, but I'm dying to know how you got it and where it was. <laughs> Coffee hopes. Ah, yes, thank you. Well, mm. after leaving you at the station, I found an inn and stayed there until evening. And then I returned to the house and concealed myself in a clump of rhododendrons just opposite the window of your bedroom. Miss Harrison had stayed there, as I'd told her. I saw her then put out the light... I felt sure she locked the door behind her, also as I'd directed. And then I settled down to await developments. Ah, ah, at last. So, that was the hiding place, under the floorboards. Joseph Harrison, give me the treaty. Step away from the window. And I have a knife. So I see. <coughs> You're a more desperate fellow than I gave you credit for. 
You took this treaty on impulse, didn't you? Uh, I... I needed money. I know. I, I was to meet Percy and go down on the train with him that night. But you were early, so you took a cab to the foreign office to call for him. Yes. His room was empty. The papers were there. I came back here and... And picked an unlucky place to hide them. What are you going to do? I have the treaty. I never had an opportunity to do anything with it. I didn't show it to anyone. It, it is still secret. For that reason, I'm going to let you go. But the police will get the details in the morning when I'm back in London. They won't find me. They'll never stop looking for you. You can be sure of that. For the rest of your life. But why did you let him go? I fancy that Lord Holdhurst and Percy here would very much rather the affair never got as far as a police court. No, indeed. Do you mean that all those ten weeks I was ill in the same room as the papers? He hid them that night, as he thought prudently, in his own room. And that night he had to give it up to me. Where you were nursed night and day ever since? <laughs> Must have been maddening for him. <laughs> he broke in the first night you didn't have a nurse, but you foiled him. I took you away to give him another chance. A chance to walk into a trap. <laughs> but how did you know it was Joseph? Hmm. The principal difficulty in the case lay in the fact that there was too much evidence. What was vital was overlaid and hidden. I suspected him from the start. You see, no one knew you had the papers except your uncle. So it had to be someone who called thinking you were working late and then saw a chance. But why on earth did he ring the bell? He came to the office in all innocence by the side door, found no one about and so rang the bell. Then he saw the papers. He had just enough time to seize them and escape. Now, you went the wrong way in the street because you saw a policeman yeah. and then became distracted by the fact of the commissioner's wife being in a hurry. How blind I have been. <laughs> Understandably, he was your fiancé's brother. She is of the finest character and so you would assume he was the same. But emotion often prevents one from facing unpalatable facts. You will not see him again. I wish you every success in your marriage and your career. So do I, old chap. How can I thank you? Oh, it's what friends are for. Tadpole. <laughs> Tell me, by the way, what was Watson's nickname at school? That was Barry Foster as Sherlock Holmes and David Buck as Dr. Watson in The Naval Treaty by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Dramatized for radio by Bill Morrison. Percy Phelps was played by Richard Kay, Lord Holdhurst by Richard Herndl, Annie Harrison, Rosalind Shanks, Joseph Harrison, John Rye, Tangy, Stephen Hancock, Mrs. Tangy, Jean Lambert, and Forbes by Terry Malloy. The play was directed in our Birmingham studios by Peter Novis.